I sometimes encounter people on the street that are mm -hmm. saying, they'll recognize me and they'll say, don't you, uh, don't you hate today? Everything's so PC, you can't say anything. And I'll think, no, you can. Oh, you, you can you, if you're you, clever, you, you can get away with anything. Well, but also you just, limits, limits are healthy and they're part of life. Yeah. We all, gravity is acting on us all the time. <laughs> yeah. Man, what, what if, why, why do we gotta be held down? Cause we'd float into space and die. <laughs> you should be happy that's there. What are you talking about? And by the way, get, get ready for, there, there are going to be periods where AI will become this weird flavor of the week. Someone will do something cool on AI that people will run to catch up with. I always, someone should do a, either a documentary or write a book about the period. I, I want it, it's like, um, after Jurassic, before the Matrix. Mm -hmm. After Jurassic Parks came, Park, Parks. After <laughs> Jurassic Park came out, every movie suddenly was like, gotta have CGI. And that's what people want to see. They want CGI. They didn't realize that, no, Jurassic Park still tells a compelling story yeah, yeah. and is great filmmaking. They weren't just going to see CGI. So you saw, it was like a decade of terrible CGI in films. Godzilla, Dragonheart, Air Force One, Escape from LA, where they were just putting in CGI almost as if that was the, a star of the movie. Right. And you'll see this CGI. And then it wasn't until The Matrix came along that then someone took it and took it to the next level. So in other words, the, and now there's a weird rebellion against a lot of CGI. A lot of filmmakers are trying to do practical effects. Yes. And filmmakers want, I mean, I think it's one of the reasons that <clears throat> The Top Gun movie was so huge and why Tom Cruise still has this massive career because he's willing to go out and kind of almost kill himself yeah. in every film. Yeah. There's not CGI trickery going on. It's like, that dude almost died. I, okay. So <laughs> I'd, pay to, I'd pay to see that. <laughs> but there will always be that pushback of, because I think um, any kind of new technology also creates that sense of like, well, there's nothing at stake here. You know, when I watch Escape from L.A., and Snake Plissken is surfing alongside Peter Fonda, and it's clearly a computer-generated wave. It's like, no one's risking their lives making this movie. This isn't exciting. They're risking then, their careers. They're risking their careers. <laughs> yeah. That is true. You know what? Credibility is, is the only thing risked. Yeah. But movie. yeah, like, that, and, that, and then you see, you know, there's always pushback, and then the same thing will happen with comedy. Same Someone thing told me that in the new Oppenheimer film that he didn't want to use, the director didn't want to use any CGI to create what we all know is the explosion of the first atomic bomb. Yeah. So instead use like uh, hundreds of thousands of sticks of dynamite and you think, uh, okay, I actually, <laughs> it would have been, it would have been, I mean, I haven't seen it yet. I yeah. don't know what it looks like, but there was a commitment to, no, this really has to look, this has to look real in some way. Although, by the way, I think 7,000 people were killed in the making <laughs> yeah, of that movie. Was, I'll go see that. Yeah. yeah I'll see that. Um, Sometimes now the cost of CGI at the level that movies like that want to do it at, it's actually prohibitive cost-wise and it's cheaper to do the real effect. In Tenet, when that plane crashes into the airport, mm -hmm. that was going to be done CGI and it's all done with a real plane and real explosives because it was cheaper to shoot the real thing. A CGI thing would have cost way too much money and it was quicker to do it that way because they're just, we set up our cameras and we got to shoot this. We, we got to get this in this take. Whereas with CGI, it would have taken an extra six months and all this extra money and all these extra crew people. And he's like, let's just shoot the thing. I love the image of the CGI guys going, well, here's what it's going to cost. <laughs> and good luck. Wait, you did what? <laughs> we just bought a 747 and yeah. we packed it with explosives and... We hired a guy to kill himself and yeah. drive it into an airport. <laughs> we set up a bunch of cameras and crossed our fingers. I mean, that's, by the way, I love, I do love watching old, I mean, I, I'm a big, I have the Criterion Channel and Turner Classic Movies because I'm a film geek and I yep. also love watching old movies, especially old stunts, even like movies in the 70s where you're like, uh, someone almost died and, and stunt work back then was, okay, here we go. <laughs> Hope no one dies. Well, car chase and bullet uh, is one of those things where you're watching it and you think, I think someone did lose their life in the making yeah. of that. And But it's one thing to have a, a chase like that in bullet, which was a major studio movie. I'm talking even the B-level drive-in movies. People were almost dying. There's, for that... the, there, there's a Joe Don Baker movie um, called Framed. And there is a stunt where a train hits a car and a guy has to jump out of the car before the train hits it and it is you when you see it you'll know it it's that that dude almost died like he barely gets out of the car clearly something's going wrong and then as he's jumping the car explodes and the fireball kind of 
engulfs him for a second and then he gets out of it and they just left it on film. And th that was that was stunts back then. Well, hope we don't die. <sighs> and before the stunt, when the car makes a, a right in the background, you can see the entire crew is all sitting on bleachers because they want to watch <laughs> this. Like, this guy's about to die. This is going to be great. Like, they just shot this movie. So, yes, for Bullet, you're like, this is a major movie. Steve yes, McQueen, yeah. huge star. Of course, but this is like Joe Don Baker. We're shooting this in two weeks down in North Carolina. So they told a guy, you're going um, to you're gonna, you're gonna get stalled in front of a train your and, job and, is just to get out before the train hits. But, but really wait till the last second if you can. <laughs> and we're just going to run a friggin' train at this. Look up Joe Don Baker frame. <laughs> and it, it says like the most dangerous stunt you've ever seen. Oh. And by also, even in comedy, you ever see used cars? Robert Zemeckis is used cars. Yeah. There's a scene, there's a dude like walking across a road drunk and this car is zooming up and barely misses him and it's done as a joke. But you're watching, if, if, what if, because the actor's doing this, ah, just walking around drunk, but he's just improv it. If he had gone the wrong way, the car would have killed him. <laughs> it's in the middle of a comedy. You're like, oh God, that guy almost died. Do you remember there was a film with Lee Horstley called Sword and the Sorcerer and the bad oh, guy God. does a high fall off a cliff and he died but they left it in the yeah, film because they he's left in the, it yeah, in and he it's his death fall is in the movie and yeah yeah it's crazy because that's what he signed up for and, and and in that culture back then it was like that's how i want to go yeah leave that in that's how i'd want to die it's nuts maybe afterwards maybe. <laughs> if they were alive for eight seconds they were like don't leave that in <laughs> <laughs> their teeth are coming through their chest cavity. <laughs> Take that! Okay, oh, here watch we go. This. Oh, this is fantastic. Okay, here we go. I love this. Visual bit on a podcast, oh but you can look God. this That's up. That's all right. Look Some it of this watch is on video. Look it up, fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy right now. Show done. Look at him. You ever been here before? No. Hey, but Dewey and Frank have, though. They had them one sweet job there once. Yeah. Well, that's that guy from History of the World. Some singer. <laughs> I guess that makes oh, yeah. you some kind of a male whore or something. Don't Shut you your it. mouth. <laughs> These guys both auditioned to be Duke boys. <laughs> Catches fire. He catches his leg fire. catches fire. Don't you get the sense that he also slows his roll so he can be a little closer? Yes. God, that was fantastic. I mean, the, and, and again, the, and uh, by the way, yeah, you can see at one point you can see the crew is all lined up in the background watching this, but like, oh, oh, oh he's fine. <laughs> You know what that guy got? A hundred dollars. Yeah, a hundred dollars. Yeah, and they and maybe they comped his room. But like, you watch a lot of Australian uh, action films from the '80s, especially like The Road Warrior. There are yeah. stunts in that movie that at the time they were saying, "Oh no, it was all in the editing" because they were right trying to work in Hollywood. But then there's a documentary about the making of, and there's people just getting racked up. And the Philippines too. There, the, the, oh, the Philippines stuff. Capitals oh, where they Lord. would just do anything. Yeah, yeah, people would do anything. The biggest thing I notice is editing, is that things are, there's uh, movies particularly and TV shows are edited so tightly yeah. that there's hardly any air. And I find it fascinating to go back and look at a show like a late seventies massive hit show, like say a Chips or something uh -huh. like that. And they'll, they'll literally a guy will drive up his, my job is to drive up in a car and meet with you in a parking lot. <laughs> and so I drive up in a car mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be a tense scene and I'm here to talk to, you know, Patton Oswalt and tell him to back off my territory or I'll kill him. I pull up <laughs> and I get out of my car, I unhook the belt, get out of my car, shut the door and then start walking. And I've parked like 15 <laughs> feet, 20 feet from you. And they show me walking all the way yeah, over to you. All of it. And you know, you look at how today the editing is so, take another frame out, take another frame out. Yeah. And what we're seeing, everything is so hyper compressed that mm -hmm. I know that when I watched, I was, when I went back and looked at some of the late night with David Letterman shows mm -hmm. that I had been watching yeah. uh, and you know, adoring, 
in the 80s. When I went back and looked at them later on, I was like, huh, it's it's slower than I remember. Yep. And it's quieter than mm -hmm. I remembered. And there's more like there, there, it's 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 not this explosion of fireworks. And I know yes. that, OK, things the pace ramped up. If you look at the the arc on our show, I know the pace ramped up. Yep. But I bet you people are going to go back later and say, this feels slow to me, this slip right. nuts bit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I remember us thinking like, well, this is so much faster than what yeah. anyone used to do. But I think we've hyper compressed everything.